our next presenter, she's going to be coming out and she's going to be talking about the future. Excuse me, wrong side there. She's going to be talking about uh, preserving uh, black culture and preservation. And you can preserve that on the blockchain. That's what it's all about. Everything's preserved right there. Take it away. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. You're going to have to bear with me after this week. I'm actually losing my voice, so it's perfect timing. Um, my name is Maya Kaitesi Lipin. I am a Rwandan and Canadian artist, and I'm very happy to be here today. Um, I know there's been a lot of talking going on, so I appreciate you guys even just listening to what I have to say today. And uh, a big thank you to NFT NYC for allowing me this space today to touch on a topic that is very near and dear to me and my community. Uh, so the topic is the future of black cultural preservation, and it's a very weighty <laughs> title, um, but it's one that encompasses the gist of what I wanted to talk about today beyond simply NFTs. So what are NFTs again? I will not bore you with these details if you're here you know what NFTs are. Just a little quick visual refreshers for the sake of taking a breath. So how does this have to do with cultural preservation? So I figured instead of going on a macro level, I wanted to shrink it down to my individual story as the daughter of a strong Rwandan woman. So, a personal story. This is my mom, Tessiri Teofila. She sent me this picture one day and she said, who's prettier, me or the flower? So, I'll let you guys decide. She really meant the world to me. Ooh, I didn't expect it. Uh, unfortunately, I lost her three years ago to breast cancer. So, uh, this presentation was inspired by my Rwandan heritage and upbringing, which I have been on a mission throughout my whole life to absorb better as a first generation born outside of the continent. So a lot of what I do in my artistry as the creator of the first traditional Rwandan art Emigongo was to utilize NFTs to plant a flag, so to speak. We're seeing a lot of African arts coming from non-African countries, right? We're seeing a lot of this being marketed out there, but where is it coming from? Is it made in China? Who knows, right? But bringing it back to my mom, when she passed away, I found these papers in one of her folders, and I was going through all of her files, and don't squint your eyes, you're not gonna be able to understand this. This is in Kenya, Rwanda, which is the native tongue of Rwanda. But I found these in my Kenya, Rwanda being very rusty. I had no idea what it was. Shortly thereafter, I went back to Rwanda on a pilgrimage. I went back home and I met cousins, families, went back to um, my family's hometown, the plot of where my grandparents lived. And my cousin saw this and he said, oh my God, I can't believe you have this. So hold that thought. I'll let you know what it is in a second. Also in her folder, I found this amazing picture and you'll see right there on the bottom left next to the white lady <laughs> is the only other black woman in this school. And my mom was actually one of the first women admitted to her local high school in Kigali and had to get special dispensation from the local diocese and my grandfather had to request that. So a little piece of fun history that probably would have been lost if I didn't have access to this story or this information in her folders. Also, I found these pics, two of her friends from high school and if you see on the back of the image, just a little signature as we all did, you know, for Teofila in memory of our friendship from Sally and Ange. Unfortunately, Sally and Ange were among the 800,000 who perished during the genocide in Rwanda in 1994. At the time, I was about 14 years old and living in Canada, and um, I remember seeing my family 
just crumble phone call after phone call. And um, <sighs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this is very important to me. Um, so when you go to the Kigali Genocide Memorial Center, there's a very impactful room that you walk into. And there are images of loved ones provided by all of the families. And you'll see every single person that is here is no longer with us today. So that's a lot of historical alpha that is no longer with us. This is my family. These are my great-grandparents on top and my older sister visiting them. The gentleman on the top is my grandfather and my uncles, along as other family members here, grandmas, aunties, most of whom are no longer here with us as well today. So what were these papers? My mom went back, starting with my great-grandfather, and it was able to trace back nine generations before him. This is a big deal for a Rwandan, because most of our historical, historical records were either lost, destroyed, or gone with the memories of the people who are no longer with us. So I'm probably one of the few who can go back nine generations. On my white side, which by the way, my dad is a white man, we went all the way back to France. I mean, we could find those super easily, right? I can get on Ancestry.com and find a whole bunch of relatives. But for African people, this is not possible. So before I conclude, I wanna leave you some food for thought because this is why I'm here today. NFTs are great as collectibles. They have a whole bunch of different utility. But what I'm passionate about is cultural preservation through the lens of the digital landscape. How can we archive our culture and our history in a non-fungible, tangible way? A hundred years from now, those who are first, second, third, fourth generation born outside of the African continent, how will we find our history? How will we find our generations going nine, 10 generations back? It's possible now. Those papers I can mint on the blockchain and my great, 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 great grandkids will just have to pull up the family NFT heirloom, right? And learn about us. And I wanna take it a step further. What if they could put on an Oculus and travel to their home village that they have never seen and sit with the elders, an AI elder who is attached to an archiving of history and immutable data, history that cannot be manipulated and changed. Even to this day, we hear so many stories about Rwanda. People come up to, oh, I'm so sorry. No, there's so much more to this narrative than the history. There is the future, the effervescence, and the vibrancy of a people. And we're here in America, I've been here 20 years, and it's, it's the same thing, whether you are African, whether you are African American who was trying to track down your lineage as well. So I really wanted to take a breath and refresh your palate when it comes to what is possible. And I really hope that you walk away from this feeling, not just as a person of color, but as a human being. How do you log your legacy? How do you celebrate your heritage, if not by protecting it? So I could talk about this all day. I have 32 seconds. I'm supposed to say thank you, but really, from the bottom of my heart, I am grateful, and my ancestors thank you as well. Thank you for this time.
Thank you, Maya.